Okay, up on the board here, before we do example one, I've got what's called the standard form of a quadratic equation. Uh, depending on which direction the parabola goes, there's a different standard form. Um, if the parabola has x to the second power, y to the first power, it's going to be an up or down turning parabola. If the number in front of the parentheses here is positive, it turns upward, so it looks like this. If the number in front of the parentheses squared is negative, it looks like that. If y is squared and x isn't, and the number in front of the parentheses a is positive, it turns to the right. And if a is negative, it turns to the left. So everyone it makes the same shape, it's just right which direction it turns. Every time hk is the vertex, so the vertex would be the lowest point of the parabola or the highest point of the parabola, or the furthest left point of the parabola, or the furthest right point of the parabola. And a is the lead coefficient of the quadratic expression. So, for example, if I have y equals 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, a equals 3. It's the number in front of the highest power term. So when it's in general form, like, like, like that, y equals everything else, the number in front of x squared is what a is. Right? So if we can determine the vertex, and we can also determine the lead coefficient, we can get the standard form pretty easily. Uh, for an up-down parabola, the axis of symmetry is a vertical dotted line that goes through the vertex, so it looks like this. So if an up-down parabola is happening, the axis of symmetry is vertical, it's going to be an x equals number equation, and x equals number 8 because that's the x coordinate of the vertex. If it's a left-right parabola, the axis of symmetry is horizontal. So it's going to be a y equals equation. It's going to go y, y equals the y coordinates of the vertex. So that's what that note sheet's for. Just kind of guide you through some stuff here. Um, example one is one technique to graph a parabola. Example two is a second technique to graph a parabola. I like example two better, personally. But um, I'll show you how to get the same place both ways, and you can determine which one you like better and go with that one. Okay, for example, one, use the technique of completing the square to find the standard form of g of x equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 19. g of x, y in disguise, right, g of x. So the y coordinate is g of x in this one. Okay, so going back to the standard form look here that we're looking for, the g, the g of x, the y term on one side equal all the x stuff over here, right? Okay, so the completing the square technique goes like this. First off, I want to extract my lead coefficient. So my first step, if I'm going to complete the square, is take my 2 out, and that's going to get me x squared minus 6x. Ooh, I'm going to leave a little space. And then plus 19. I'm going to keep my constant separated from the x's. I want the x's together. But I don't want that, I want the lead coefficient to be 1, not 2. So I take the 2 out, even if it makes this a fraction. So it's kind of like taking out a common factor, but even if it's not a common factor, you want that to be x squared and nothing else. Completing the square is what it always has been. You take half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So we get this magical number. Now, here's the, the tricky part here. I added 9 inside the parentheses, which is being multiplied by 2, so I actually added 18 to this side. And usually I add 18 to the other side, right? But I want g of x equal everything over here, right? So I don't want extra stuff over there. So instead of putting a plus 18 over there to account for the plus 18 I put here, I'm going to put a minus 18 out here. So the end result of what I've added to this side, I added 18, I subtracted 18, so in essence I've added 0. But I just added 18 and subtracted 18 in two different places. So I'm going to get what I'm looking for here, and I'm going to get some different number out here. All right? That gets me to g of x equals two parentheses. The whole reason we complete the square is to get this nice perfect square trinomial that factors easily. The square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 is 3, the sine of the linear term is negative, and we square that parentheses. 19 minus 18 is plus 1. Okay. Now, that's standard form. That's how you create standard form using completing the square. It gets us right where we belong. Now, going back to this other sheet, we've got two pages here. All right. It's the x squared one, so it's this one here, right? It tells me hk is the vertex. Now notice in the standard form it says minus h plus k. What that means is to find the vertex, I'm going to have to change the sign of this one, and I take the same sign as that one. All right? 
right? So the vertex of this parabola is going to be positive 3, positive 1. Okay. Minus h, so change the sign of the thing inside the parentheses, comma k, take the sign that's outside the parentheses. I also know that a is equal to 2, which is greater than 0, so it's positive. That tells me my parabola turns upward. All right. And finally, what I know based on this sheet here is since it's an up or down parabola, x is squared times positive a, I know x equals 3 is my axis of symmetry. Okay. So going back to this, now I want to make a graph. All right. So here's how I graph it. Right. 1, 2, 3, 1 is my ver vertex. X equals 3 is my axis of symmetry, which I'm going to draw as a vertical line dashed through the vertex. Right. This axis of symmetry is a mirror. If I have a point on one side of the mirror, there's a point in the same location on the other side of the mirror. All I have to do is figure out another point. Okay. I usually go with the x, sorry, the y-intercept, 0, 19, but I don't want to graph 0, 19. One goes up to 11. I, don't, I could scale it maybe, but I don't want to do that. So um, basically, if I just do a basic xy chart here, that's kind of fancy. Yeah. I just do a basic xy chart, and I pick any number for x. Let's say I pick uh, 4. I would pick something near the vertex. The closer you are to the vertex, the smaller the numbers are going to be. The further you get away, the bigger they get. Right. So picking 4, which is close to that. Now I can go right here. 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. Minus 48 is negative 12 plus 19 is 7. Right? I could have also gone right here. That's, that'd be something wrong. It shouldn't be 7. It should be 3. Try again. If that's 4, 16 times 2 is 32, right? Mm -hmm. Minus 48 is negative 16 plus 19 is 3. Yeah. I could have also gone right here if I changed that to a 4. 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 squared is 1, times 2 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So if you got your standard form, it's real easy. If you're near the vertex, to just stick the number in there, square it, multiply and add. Either way, you're going to get 3. So 4 comma 3 is a point, and that's one space away from the axis of symmetry to the right. So one space away to the left is also going to be a positive 3. Okay, so that's how you can do it. If I wanted another point, let's say I want a 5. Let's do that here. If I put 5 right here, 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2 spaces away is 9, so 2 spaces away the other direction is also 9. We've already established 0 is going to be 19. And that's going to be off the page then. So I just connect those dots. What you notice about this parabola compared to the ones we've seen already is that one's a little bit steeper. Uh, as the lead coefficient gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the parabola is going to go upward much more rapidly, which causes more steepness or a thinner parabola, if you will. If x is equal, or if a is equal to one, it's just your regular parabola. If x, if a is less than one between zero and one, it ends up becoming fatter. Okay, and when we get to chapter eight, we're going to get more in depth with parabolas. But for now, that's that's the extent of the graph I like.